I guess it's time to admit I know nothing about how CD players work. All right, who remembers these things? This is a Bose Wave 3 CD player, and playing is one thing it is not doing. Let's find out why. It is dumping rain outside right now, so I figured we'd do something a little different, a little electronics repair indoors. This is my grandma's unit, and I know she'll be more than happy to be able to play CDs. All right, you wanna plug it in and see what it does? Can we even put a CD in there? I think I see this this tray slider that selects between the CDs is maybe getting fetched up like it needs to be lubricated. Let's see what happens if we try to put a CD in. Can take it? No. It senses and tries to move up, but see how that one's clicking and clacking? I wonder if it's lubrication or I wonder if the gears have gotten out of sync. Let's see if we can pull this top plate off and check out what's underneath. This entire carriage is off kilter. It's got a top and a bottom plate that have gotten out of sync somehow. The switch that tells it where it's at is over on this side here. So maybe it thinks it's lower than it is because that side is sitting low. I think I'll get this transformer out of here and then take the two larger screws. There's one there and one over there. And then I'll get our top plate off. We've got to bring that shaft up far enough to clear, but we can't until that's out of the way. Maybe we'll just take that switch off. I see you can unscrew it right there. We can just push that off to the side and then maybe we can get our entire carriage out of here and hope that no springs go flying. I'm gonna screw, screw these lead screws all the way up so they'll clear the posts. Can I get in to detach that ribbon cable though? And there we go. There you have it, this is the, the lock tab that I just pushed back. That's locked and free. And then the cable comes in that direction. There's our little lead screw assemblies. Those just got out of sync somehow. Maybe we screw these all the way in, put it back into place and check that it is synced up somehow. There's the gear train that makes it all work. I'll check to see if they're missing any teeth or if there's anything obvious that would have caused it to skip around. Should we plug it in and see what it does? It's pretty cool. So what is the sensor to tell it that it has a disc inside? Is it this here? Those little, you see those switches there? That's triggered and released. There's three more micro switches right there that are actuated by those levers. I think those are connected to these. Yes, okay, that's uh, some feedback. That looks like that actuates fine. Okay. That was my other fear is that there'd be one of these little switches that's failed. It's just not actuating properly. The fact that this problem occurs on all three discs it makes me think it's the mechanical parts of that carriage. Yeah, so I'll just lightly bottom all of those threads out in the plastic. Whew, that was a tough cable to plug in. Had to bend it all the way back on itself. This black piece needs to be all the way that direction to keep from fetching up on this little nub. And what that black plastic slider piece is, is a gate. So when this is at the proper height, it that plastic tooth can slide into a groove at the three different levels that carriage needs to stop at. Make sure the gears are engaged. Okay, I think that's back together enough where we can test. Oh yeah, it's totally binding up. So what's happened is it's tried to raise before this 
this plastic piece has fully slid out that way so that dog that I was describing earlier that's still locked in if you look down under where that's the kind of the area it was sliding there's this little bushing that I think is supposed to index with one of those rails or perhaps with that there it influences those two arms So after much trial and error, I think I found the source of our binding. I took this apart a few more times, inspected the bases of these jack screws. The bottom side is the nut that it threads through and the top is free floating. And this is the driving screw, the one that has our little potentiometer slider sensor to tell the mechanism where it's at. This one has broken off. This is the bottom piece that should be attached right there. The bottom of the carriage has has no way of positively locating itself. This top plate will just float around. Right next to that screw is the tab that interfaces with that switch that lets it know where it's at. So it was overextending the carriage up and down. It, it couldn't exactly know the position of this bottom plate. That's unfortunate. I guess we could see if we could super glue it together. Here is the top piece of the collar. This is the actual drive nut and that attaches to the flange like that. Okay, got that glued back together and we can stick it back in the hole. So I ended up having to take this board back off. It's a bayonet mount so those plastic tabs have to insert and then twist. I glued it nice and firmly in place there. I think that's not going anywhere. There it is, checking the limits up and down. This is further than we've gotten yet. Look at that. Well guys, I'll call that a success. I'm really happy we were able to make this work. So I'm gonna button this guy back up, get it back to grandma's house, and we'll be uh, ready to go another day. If by some small miracle I get uh, an experienced CD player repair technician in the comments, let me know what you thought of that. Let me know if there's anything you do different. I always appreciate those comments. And if you have one of these Bose Wave radios, I really hope this was helpful. Maybe it'd help you know your way around the machine if anything else or uh, see how not to take it apart. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.